The Sign Painter's Dream by Roger Roth. Read by Jamie Farr. Clarence was a sign painter. People called him Krabby Clarence because he complained about everything. Most of all, he complained about his job. This job is so boring. I painted the very same sign just last week. It's the same old stuff day after day after day. The only time he was happy was when he read a history book about the Revolutionary War. Why couldn't we have lived in George Washington's day? Even ordinary people like me were heroes then. They did glorious and magnificent things and were never bored. Before long, Clarence was dreaming about the glory days of the Revolutionary War. The next day, while Clarence was working, a small gray-haired woman entered his shop. Hello! I need you to paint me a big sign. Well, that's what I'm here for. What do you want this sign to say? Free apples if you need them. And I'd like it glorious and magnificent so that anyone driving down the road will notice it. I can make you a sign for only three hundred dollars. <laughs> but I, I want you to make it for free. Why should I do it for free? Do I look like Santa Claus? But I give away my apples for free. You know what my Aunt Tilly used to say? A hero is he who helps people for free. A slime ball, you see, will charge them a fee. Sorry, lady. I don't have time to make signs for free. And he stomped back to his workroom. Later that evening, Clarence was mumbling something about crazy Aunt Tilly when he dropped off to sleep. In his dream, Clarence found himself working hard by lamplight. Suddenly, the door to his shop swung open and... General George Washington stepped into the room. With blazing eyes and a booming voice, Washington spoke directly. Clarence, I need a sign. Can you do it? I, uh, I, uh, g -g 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 guess so, Clarence stammered. What kind of a sign do you need? I need a big sign that says, send shoes to Valley Forge. My men are desperate. Some of them have to walk in the snow with only rags wrapped around their feet. Okay, General, I can do the sign for only $300. $300? Don't give me a headache. I want you to make this sign for free. For free? But nothing. Remember what Aunt Tilly used to say. Ye old hero is he who helps people for free. Ye old scoundrel, you see, doth charge them a fee. Clarence awoke with a start. He sat staring for a moment, and then suddenly he said to his cat, We're going to the shop. All through the night, the sounds of sawing, of hammering, of drilling and sanding could be heard outside the little sign shop. Clarence hummed and whistled as he worked. For the first time in his life, he actually seemed to be enjoying himself. At sunrise, Clarence's truck bounced along the road that led out of town. Soon Clarence saw a big orchard full of ripening apples. And he set to work. A little while later, he strode up to the farmhouse and banged on the door. Who's there? Squeaked a voice from inside. It's Clarence, ma'am. I've got something for you. My goodness, said the apple lady as she opened the door and looked out. You did it! apples if you need them. 
and you remembered to make it glorious and magnificent. Now you're a real hero, and you deserve a reward. Clarence felt terrific. The sign was the most beautiful he had ever made. He was glad the apple lady liked it so much. And when she set down the most perfect slice of apple pie, along with a tall glass of cold milk, he had never been happier. From that day on, people stopped calling him Krabby Clarence. They admired the apple lady's sign and brought Clarence many orders for other glorious and magnificent signs. And now and then, he'd make one just for fun and for free. <laughs>